Greetings hobbies, this is Arsan Zavul, and in this tutorial we're going to be having a look at the add-on box cutter. So the first thing to say about box cutter is that it is a paid for add-on and that you can get it from somewhere such as Blender Marketplace and it's generally bundled together with another add-on called Hard Ops. I would strongly recommend that you get both. They work together. And while I'm going to focus on box cutter in this tutorial, realistically, Using them together is when you get the most efficient with them and you're going to get the most out of them. It's also discounted buying them as a bundle, so I really recommend if you're going to get one that you get the other. So as always, to install an add-on, you're just going to go to Edit, Preferences, you're going to go to Add-ons, you click the Install button and you find where you've downloaded it, the most recent version that you've got, and you click that to install it. Obviously, I've already got that installed. And then you will need to activate it by making sure that that box there, the checkbox, is clicked. And once you've done that, you will see this icon at the bottom, which is box cutter. I've also got hard ops, which is just there, but that's the box cutter symbol, and you can activate it by clicking that. Alternatively, you can press Alt and W, and this will activate it. And you can see that because it's going to bring this toolbar at the top. If it doesn't look like this for any reason, just press N, go down to box cutter, and if you go all the way to the bottom here and click display, you should have clicked this, which is simple toolbar. If you take it off this, it goes into this much more complex version. I mean, if you prefer that, that's fine. Some people do. I prefer the simple version that just looks like this. So I'm gonna press N to hide that side panel and let's start looking through these. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna go through these each in turn, going along and talking about what each thing does, at least where I think it's relevant. There will be a couple that I'm gonna miss out and we'll talk about why as we go through them. But before we do that, let's talk about what box cutter is. At its most simple, box cutter is just an add-on for booleaning objects together. Now, don't get me wrong, when we get into this, you're gonna see it's much more than that in terms of what you can do and how powerful it is, but it's very basic, that's what it does. Now, let's have a quick look at how this functions in its very basic sense. So all I do is I click on the object that I want to do, and I'm just going to click and drag my mouse to make this shape, in this instance, a box. I'm gonna release my mouse, and then I'm gonna drag through, and I'm gonna make my Boolean cut. And you'll see in my outliner, what that has done is it's automatically added this cutter collection, which Box Cutter puts everything into, and I could easily bring that back so I can see the cutter there. I'm gonna hide that, I don't want that showing. Now, as well as that drag feature, there is another feature which you can use. So the drag feature, when I click and then release my mouse, I could pull it only part way through if I wanted to, to create some sort of indent like that. There is also the option of if I just drag there, instead of having to drag through, if I just double click, it automatically cuts all the way through the object. I believe they call that the laser cut option. And that just makes that nice and quick to do if you want to cut all the way through. I'm just gonna undo those. So let's start going through these options. And the first option that's up here is the cut option. Now I should say, if you press D, you'll get all of these options in this box helper menu. So you can just do that by clicking here. And I'm gonna be honest, I use this most of the time. I don't use that top bit very often. I just press D and everything's here. And there's a few extra options here that aren't apparent in this top selection, but it's entirely up to you. And I'm just gonna use this as a good order to go through. So the first option is the cut, and that essentially just makes a difference Boolean. The next option here is the slice. Now what this is gonna do is it's just going to show it in a different color, in this instance, yellow. And as far as I go through and click, it has created a slice. And what that means, if I come into my modifier stack, you'll notice this automatically creates the modifier, is I've now got two separate objects. I've got one object here, which was my original bit, and now a second bit here. And if I apply these, I could, for example, move that out. So that is the slice option. Then I've got the intersect tool. Now that just does an intersection Boolean, so anything that is shared space is going to be created. So you can see I'm only creating a shape where the intersection with the cube that I was creating and my original box was. So that's the intersect tool. Then we have the inset tool. This is probably my favorite one. What this does is this creates, as the name suggests, a nice inset. And you'll see this has done a lot of work in the background to create this nice slightly inset series of faces. And you've got that inset there, which you can then control. There is a lot of fun that you can do with this. It's probably my favorite feature of it because it's the most time saving. 
Then we have the join, and this effectively is a union boolean. So again, if I just draw an object here and just move it through and click, all it's done is made this additional object and joined or unioned them together. So that is the join option. Then we have the knife option, which if I do this here, you'll see that it looks like nothing's happened. And importantly, this one does not add a modifier. It does this destructively and there's no way around that. But if I go into vertex mode, you can see this has created a knife cut there. So it's a nice quick way of creating knife cuts, which is really useful. Then we have the extract option. Now I'm just gonna have to go back into the cut mode to look through this just to show you what this does. So for example, if I make, let's say a cut there, and I'm gonna do another one there all the way through. What the extract tool does is it goes over and it copies the booleans that are in operation there. And now you'll see that it's automatically created a cut function, but this cut function, instead of being a box, is now going to be this collection of booleans. So if I do this here, you'll see that is created the same shape. It's at a slightly different angle here because of the long edge of this object, but we can have a look at that or we'll have a look at that later. So that will create something that is the same shape as the booleans we've already got. So I guess there would be some uses for that if you've got a shape that you particularly want to replicate. And the final one is the make. So that is going to allow me to draw something and I'm going to make a new object. Now, just something quick to talk about this. While this is a separate object, you'll see we've got this dotted line here. And what this means is this has been parented to my original object. As I move one, it's gonna move the other. Now, I very rarely use the make option because effectively you don't need to. If you are in cut mode or any other mode, obviously this when you've got the object selected will create a cut. But if I click off of this so an object isn't selected, you'll notice if you look in the top left hand corner, this is automatically now made this a make option. And it's now made this object which I can move around. But if you do it without an object being selected, then you'll notice they are not parented together. Whereas if I go, if I select this object here and select the make option, and let's do something like that, You'll see this one because it was created while this was selected. If I move this around, that second one is now parented to it, whereas the first one isn't. So there are tool options. Now at the moment, I'm just gonna go back into cut mode and we're gonna focus on cutting for now, but obviously we can do these other options with the different things we're gonna look at. So let's move to the next thing, which is the shapes. Again, you've got these shape options here, and if I just press D, you've got them down the side. So let's look at the one we're in now, which is a box. So if I select the object, I'm drawing a box. So nice and easy. Now we do have this other option here, and you'll notice these options come at the side, or if I press D, they're normally here. And that option is the draw line box. And now this allows me to draw a line if I hold my mouse button down. If I let go, I then start drawing the other dimension of this box. And again, I can click one more time and start cutting through. So this is quite useful as it allows me to do it at a different angle. You should also note that when I start doing this, if I come close to straight on, you can see this. When I start drawing my line, it automatically starts to snap to different orientations. And those orientations by default are 15 degrees. So for example, there is horizontal one, two, three. I know that's a 45 degree angle. I can release my mouse and cut through. And I know that's at 45 degrees. If you don't want it to snap, you can just hold the control button and that will allow it to freely move. So that is the line box. So the next one we've got is our circle tool. I'm gonna to click off that line. So we've just got the basic circle. And effectively all this is gonna do is draw a circle. And again, we cut through or partially cut through exactly the way we do with our other ones. And there are some important things for this. The most important one being how many edges or vertices this circle has got. And again, we can see that here. Now, typically you'll do something like 64 or eight if I select this object and do that. You can see we've got an eight-sided circle. So you've got all of these different options there. The other one is if you don't want that, especially if you're doing something for 3D modeling and you need more detail, here you can either drag it along or you can type in, for example, 128 is what I had this on 
and oh, that's not going to work because I haven't clicked on the object. There we go. So we've got 128 vertices circle there. The other option we've got is a line circle. So this is going to allow us to make a deformed circle instead of something being perfectly round. So you can create a shape like that. So that's quite useful for various different purposes. And the final one we've got here is our N-Gon. So this one's possibly the most fun. All I do is click and hold down to make my initial cut or my initial line. And again, that jumps to 15 degree increments. Draw a line, click if I want to add something. So I might do, let's say 30 degrees there and then go all the way across, click. And now I need to double click to confirm that. And then I start moving that across. Okay, so we get these really nice series of cuts there. Now, importantly, this does default generally to the view you're looking at. So I'll normally use one of the axes on this gimbal. So for example, there to make sure I'm doing it relevant to the face that I'm looking at. So something like that. So I did four clicks there, double click to activate it or to say that was the final point and another double click to laser cut through. And the other thing with the Engon, and again, you can see it here, or if you press D, you can see the option there, is this cyclic mode. Now, what that is going to do is that's going to take away the fact that the first point and the last point are joined together. And essentially, it's just going to make a line instead of something that's joined together. So, for example, I could come out there, double click and start cutting through. Now, in this instance, we're going to look at something that I'm not going to talk about until another time. But if I press T, I can start making that line thicker. And then we've got this nice thick cut there. So that is quite a useful feature there. Really useful for adding in panel lines. And you can see that on my video on panel lines, which is in the description. And the final one, if I just turn cyclic back on, is this option here, which is the lasso draw mode. And all this does is, and you'll notice this isn't up here. You've got to press the D mode for this extra menu. If I just freehand this around, take my mouse off and then we're now cutting an object that's got these nice curved shapes to it. So the lasso mode's quite useful. I would say I find getting this precise with the lasso mode quite difficult. And then we've just got our custom shape, which we've looked at previously. That's what is made by using the extract option. So I'm just gonna go back to box to demonstrate the other things. Now this next box is largely irrelevant. I will talk through it just for the sake of completeness. Now at the moment, all this does is it shows where you're going to create the origin of your cutter. So it automatically, I think, starts as the bounding box center. So if I draw, oops, I'm on line box mode. Let's just turn that off for the sake of simplicity. So if I draw my box and do something like that, okay, again, the cutter's got hidden, so it's almost irrelevant. If I bring this back and select the cutter, you can see that the origin is the center of this because I've asked it to be the center of my bounding box. If I undo that and then change this option to be where we've got the centered origin, if I do the same thing again and show it, you'll notice that now the origin is at the center of the first shape, so the face that I was starting with. There may be some uses for that depending on what you want or where you want the origins to be. Obviously, you can come back in here and change the origin. Now I've got this selected, I can press Shift and S and change it to the geometry and put it back to the middle so it doesn't stop you changing it. You can also have it going to the center of the active element. So again, if I draw this box here and show it, now the origin is actually the same as my active object. And then the final one is the mouse position. And what this does, if I again draw one more box and cut it through and then reveal it and select it, you'll see that starts on the corner where your mouse did its first click. So lots of different options there. The main one that I have a tendency to use is going to either be this one. The reason being that if I want to rotate it, I know I'm rotating it, I'm going to rotate it around that corner or using the bounding box center. Though effectively, this would actually probably do the same thing as that. But if I use this and do that there, when I want to rotate this, I know this is instead of rotating on that corner, going to rotate around the center. And I prefer this bounding box center to the face center because that means I could do this from any angle that I want to rotate it around. So I know how that's going to perform. 
Now, I'm actually going to miss out the shift operations. Essentially, this just sets some actions that's going to be done already. It just sets something up to be automatically occurring. And in most instances, I'll actually do that through the shape that I'm making. So I'll come back to that in another video if we have time. Now, the next one here you could argue might actually be more important than all of the other options put together. And that is the orientation or how this is going to function. Now, what I mean by this is at the moment, this is set to object, which I think is what it's got it as default. And you may have noticed that whatever my view, when I've started drawing on this, it has aligned itself to the face perfectly. And that is because I'm in object mode. Now within that, there are some different options within object mode. For example, this will automatically align in this instance to the longest edge. You can also set it to go to the nearest edge or to be on the local axes, which the local axes are essentially this. Now this for a cube, all of these options are fairly irrelevant. They're gonna basically do the same thing. If I delete this and bring in, let's say a cylinder, and I set this to be, let's say only eight edges just for the sake of simplicity, and I'm gonna G and Z that up and make that a bit bigger. Now that we've got a lot more faces here, this is gonna have more of an important effect. Let me just hide that gizmo because it's annoying. So if I change this to the, let's say longest edge, the longest edge on this object or this face here is going to be this one. So again, it will align perfectly. However, I might not want it to align with this. And in other faces, there isn't one longest edge. I mean, there might be if I start deforming it. But the other one that's really useful is to do the nearest edge. For example, this one here, if I go to this being the nearest edge, this one will automatically start cutting down at the same angle of the nearest edge I started at. And again, I can just come here and it's gonna do the same thing. So that's really quite useful, but I could still, if I wanted to, change this to instead of being that, being the local axis of the object. And if I do that, you'll notice that's going to start going with the local axis of this object, in this instance, using X, Y, and Z. So that is object mode. Just gonna go back to my cube. The other option is view mode. Now, to be clear about this, view and object are the most commonly used and you can just flick between them with that button so you don't even need to go into the options. And all view align does is it just aligns it with exactly the way that you're looking. So if I draw this box here and double click, you'll notice it hasn't orientated itself to the object. It has cut through it exactly the direction that I was looking at. Now, in a lot of instances, view and object make very little difference for me. Most of the time, I come into the axis or the view that I want to cut. So for example, here, doing it in view mode, and notice that once you've started the cut, you can change your viewing angle and it's gonna make no difference, will be exactly the same as the object. But it does give you an option to start cutting through things at angles, should you want to. So that is the view option. Now, the last two are very, very rarely used. This is the cursor and the world, and essentially they do the same thing, one off of the cursor and one off of the origin. So I guess to make this relevant, I'm probably gonna need to move this object, so let's move it to here. So this is quite useful because it can do things that are quite clever. Now, there are better ways to do this in my mind, but at least it's there as an option. So if I go into face mode and select this face, and I press Shift and S and change my cursor to be on the face, what I can do if I've got cursor selected here is you'll notice I've got the option of X, Y, and Z. So for example, if I select Z, now the Z axis effectively is this line, okay, a line that's coming down here. So if I start drawing here, this is actually not gonna make much difference because it's on the edge, but you'll notice that draws in what is the Z axis. So just there. Now, if I uh, change this to something else, for example, let's go into the X axis and start drawing. You'll notice that now this is automatically halfway through. If I come here and activate X-ray mode so we can see this really clearly, we can see this started the cut along the direction of my X axis if I look at my gimbal. So the X axis was there. It's automatically halfway up because that's where my cursor was. And the origin or the world does the same thing, but now it is doing it from that point. If I go into Y, for example, and start drawing here, you'll notice 
that this is in line or was in line with that. So something to play around with. I'm going to be honest, I never use world. I think I've used cursor once in my life. Everything else is object and view. It's just not really worth fiddling with anything else, in my experience. Now, the reason for that is because anything that we want to do with this, we can generally do better with the next two options. So the first one is just snapping. So, I mean, it says what it does when I hold my mouse over it. Snap points when holding control. So if I go to a face and hold control, you'll notice we've got these magic circles or dots that have appeared. And essentially, if I click on one of those, I will start creating the object in that place. So I started making the corner just there. So a really useful way of getting exactly dead center. Now, you will notice that when I press control on this face, if I drag or come over to this face, it doesn't change. I have to release control, press down again, and now I've got these. But it's really useful to create these additional shapes that I want to start cutting through. So it gives me that I know is exactly halfway up, which means that I didn't really need to use the cursor option. And now that I've made that cut, even though it hasn't been applied and I press control again, you'll see I've now got another one for this half. So I could do the same thing again. So this allows you to be nice and precise about that going to halfway points. Now, the other thing we can do is you can start to manipulate this. For example, if I go to edge mode and I did something like control and R to create an edge there and I did control and R to create an edge there. Now, when I go into object mode and press control, it's got separate faces here so I can start breaking this down a little bit more. So, for example, that is an eighth in. So you can do little things to be able to manipulate this and where the faces are. Now, the other option, you'll notice this automatically starts snapping, is grid mode. Now, there are, again, quite a lot of options here. And if I press D and I come down here to the snapping, you can see all these options here as well, just slightly in a different format. And if I press Control now, you will see I've got this grid. Now, this grid is created at certain increments in size, and they are going to be based on the object or and what you've set yourself. So for example, if I come here and select my options, these are currently set at one meter. So this creates a grid here where we can see we've got these meter increments. So this allows me to be nice and precise with how big I want this to be. So say for example, I wanted this cut to be, I don't know, one meter by two meters. And I let go and start cutting. And you'll notice if I keep holding down control, it's still snapping to meters here. So that's one meter in two, two meters in, three meters in, or I can release and I've got my control back. So you've got a lot of options here using this grid, which is really, really helpful. Now, the one thing I should mention about this is you'll notice that this grid does snap based on where the origin was and the origin is in the center here. Now, that is useful in some ways. For example, this is 10 wide, so I can go from this edge and count one, two in, but you'll notice because this is five meters or five whatever units high, because this is being measured from the origin, you'll notice that it's only going one, two, and then a half up without me being able to select that edge. So you've got to be aware that this is coming from the origin. And if you want to, if you came into face mode and let's say selected that face to face, now if I tab into object mode, and go here and press control, you'll notice that now it is on that top edge. It's not half an increment. So you can move your origin around of your object to be able to manipulate where this grid is snapping to. So some fun things to play around with there, but something that's great for you to be able to make specific shapes. For example, if I want to be one in, one down, so I'm gonna start there, go three across, go up a little bit extra, snap, and then press control one, two, three, and I've got that done. Now, obviously we don't have to do this in meters. You can click here and change this to whatever increment you want. For example, I could change this to 0.5, and then I've got even more options here. So I can do this as precise or as big as I want. So I could just go half a meter in, one meter down, and then let's say one and a half across, go up, and then control again to go half a meter in.
So a lot of control with these options here. And again, with D, all of this is being shown here and you can move your increments as you want and have the grid or not. Now I'm gonna turn off snapping and the last thing I'm gonna mention for today is this button here. Now with the exception of the knife tool, everything automatically is done non-destructively, which means over here in the modifier panel, we get our booleans and we can turn this on and off from view and it hasn't been activated yet or it hasn't been confirmed would be the better word. And I can apply this here and now it is done. It's part of the geometry. Or I can decide I don't like it and just delete it. Now, if you change this to being destructive, what that will do is anything you do will be created and you'll notice as I was doing this, it creates the modifier until I click and then it was automatically applied this. So it's automatically there. Now I generally do everything or as much as I can non-destructively unless I'm 100% positive that that's exactly what I want. So it's up to you whether you want to use that or not. Um, I will say if there's certain things that you know you're not going to change, for example, if I'm creating an object here and I know that I'm going to have something cut out. So for example, if I get my grid up here and I know that I want something cutting in from the middle here, 45 degrees down there and then all the way to the edge up there, something like that. If I know that and I'm not going to want to waste time applying it, then you could do this destructively. But to be honest, I would probably keep it non-destructive just for simplicity's sake. So that's where we're going to leave it for this tutorial. In our tutorial on Monday, we are going to carry on with this. and We're going to start having a look at more of the finessing points that we can do with this. For example, if I go into, let's say, box mode and I want to change this to be an inset, there are lots of additional options and shortcuts you can use. For example, if I start drawing this, we can also do a lot of things like changing the thickness here. We can also make a bevel to the different edges here and then the ones at the back there as well so we can start changing these around have a totally different shape so there's a lot of different things that we can do here so say for example i change this to a cut there are some really fun things that we can do for example making a cut there for example i could change the amount of bevel that there is on that and I could even add in something like an array to turn this into, let's say there, something that's going to be maybe a vent system. So there's lots of little things we can do with our cutters that really speed up our life. And we will start having a look at those different options on Monday's tutorial. So do subscribe if you're not already so that you're going to be able to get alerted for when that happens. As always, I hope you found this video useful. As I said, it's gonna to combine together with our video on Monday to have gone through everything that you will need to know for using Box Cutter to be able to create these complex objects really, really quickly.